for continuing our special series, Protecting the Planet, with an up-close look at the powerful storm systems known as atmospheric rivers. They're extreme weather events. They can cause flooding, billions of dollars in damage. And the latest one is hitting the West Coast right now as we speak. Senior national and environmental correspondent Ben Tracy joined an airborne research mission with the Hurricane Hunters, who are now doing double duty as what you might call atmospheric river runners. Fuel boost pumps. Engine start master. We're taking off from Honolulu, Hawaii. That's the best view I've ever had of that. On a plane filled with U.S. government scientists. We're kind of almost in the thick of things here. They often use this jet to hunt hurricanes. And you can kind of see a lot of heavy precipitation on the radar here. But today, they're looking for something else. So instead of a hurricane, we're flying into an atmospheric river? That's right. Yep. Yeah, the mission profile is fairly similar to the hurricane missions, but, you know, the makeup of the storms are a lot different. Atmospheric rivers that form over the Pacific Ocean often hit the West Coast, dumping extreme amounts of rain and snow and fueling storms that can travel across the country. An onslaught of atmospheric rivers pummeled California last winter, eradicating the state's drought but causing $4.6 billion in damages. If we get too much, it's a problem. If we get too little, it's a problem. Marty Ralph is director of the Center for Western Weather and Water Extremes at UC San Diego. He's been studying atmospheric rivers for more than two decades. What exactly is an atmospheric river? An atmospheric river is really a river in the sky, but it's a river of water vapor pushed by the wind. Atmospheric rivers can measure 500 miles across and stretch 2,000 miles long. They can carry about as much water as 25 Mississippi rivers and are expected to become stronger as climate change heats the planet because a warmer atmosphere holds more moisture. The climate models are projecting that there's going to be longer dry spells, but also the wettest of the wet days, the top 1% wettest days, could be a lot wetter. So the extremes are getting more extreme. Exactly. And release on now. During this seven-hour reconnaissance mission, scientists from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration dropped 30 of these instruments with little parachutes into the storm. And that's giving us constant temperature, relative humidity, wind speed, wind direction, all the way down. It takes about 15 minutes for it to travel that distance. It's invaluable information from inside an atmospheric river they can't get from a satellite image. And that's really helpful for forecasters down on the ground to be able to forecast exactly where this is going to go. NOAA says data from flights like these has already improved the accuracy of forecasts by 10 percent, better pinpointing where and when storms will hit and how much rain and snow they will drop. That can save lives and protect property. It also gives reservoir operators better data to decide when to release water to make room for an upcoming storm or hold on to it for the dry season. Exactly, it gives people better awareness of what might be coming. Marty Ralph says the term atmospheric up. river was only formally defined by scientists in 2017. And there's still a lot to learn about these rivers in the sky that appear to hide in plain sight. They sort of don't look like much, even when you're flying right over them at 41,000 feet. It just kind of looks like a cloudy day out there. Yeah, but there's a lot going on down there. For CBS Mornings, I'm Ben Tracy over the Pacific Ocean.